happiness through curiosity on TRS Clips. You spoke about the Buddhist deity version of Shiva. What was Ji. the name? Uh, Buddhist deity version of Shiva, the, uh, the Chakra Samvara, the one who resides, yeah, yeah, Chakra Samvara. What is his significance, Chakra Samvara? Wow, is it related to death or destruction? No, or no, 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 nothing like that. Okay, Chakra Samvara is actually, uh, it's a Buddha actually, enlightenment. Yeah, mm. Mm. it's basically just enlightenment. It is again we are talking about. something that cannot be described in terms of words i can just tell you that when you in retreat chakra samvara retreat for 6 months or 1 year however long your guru tells you to uh, you know recite chakra samvara's mantra so usually what happens in order to understand chakra samvara or to connect to him or to get his blessings or transform yourself yeah uh, how, however you want to say it um your guru will tell you to go into retreat for a certain amount of time and to recite a certain number of his mantra so for example he might say something like just say om tare tu tare tu re so ha 10 syllables so you will say like uh 10 syllables um uh, you know chant each one 1 lakh times so like equivalent so multiply 10 by 1 lakh times something like that so it depends it depends on the guru it depends on the tantra on which the retreat is based on it's all written there that you must chant this mantra each syllable equivalent the complete mantra and each syllable equivalent to like one lakh times aisa kuch hota hai so yeah like sometimes millions of times sometimes billions of times sometimes it can take up to 6 months sometimes up to 2 3 years but usually we complete it within 3 years and 3 months you know these numbers seem discouraging for many viewers <laughs> million billion lakh Ji. Even in the Gayatri Mantra book, he's spoken about doing it lakhs of times. Ji. I think what's also important to be mentioned here in this podcast is what I like to call time dilation. Ji. Which basically means when you're meditating with enough calmness, what ends up happening is after a point, you're not chanting the mantra; the mantra is chanting you. Okay. And in that moment. the nature of time changes and the nature of how many times you've chanted it also changes you go into a bit of a trance ji have you felt time change when you've been meditating yeah like when you really go deep into meditation and when you're inside a small room for 3 years and 3 months no outside contact no mobile phones no television nothing at all just you and maybe your guru with you in in the next room uh for the first few months of course everything is like very uh you know difficult time seem to pass very slowly and you just kind of like counting down the days <laughs> when you will get out after like 3 4 months when the dust settles you kind of go into this uh zone and it becomes very seamless it becomes like very cruise mode you don't have to shift gears you don't have to press the accelerator it's just soaring and you don't really don't care too much about the time factor anymore and you actually wish that you could spend more time mm. because as you chant more and more you start to manifest a deity's powers in yourself you start to feel it yourself the idea of chanting mantras and to visualize a deity in a very set condition for a set amount of time is that you transform yourself into a deity and you start to exhibit some of the deity's characteristics a little bit fearful a little bit compassionate sometimes you'll be angry you know but usually enlightening more wisdom yeah um you do have to take care of yourself that you don't like we talked about earlier spiritual suffering and so on you don't get spiritual arrogance that that can be a big pitfall so we see usually that when you do these kind of deity practices uh like mantric tantric practices it is like a snake in a bamboo it can either go up enlightenment or down to hell or to you know so you have to be really careful you cannot go left or right so before you enter this bamboo like be sure that you want to enter the bamboo and you really can follow your guru's words to the letter we call it samaya the guru's instructions and don't break it if the guru says to you drink water from your shoes 
You have to drink water from your shoes. You need to have this absolute trust in your guru. And you have to see that the guru himself is a manifestation of a Buddha. So like I said, Buddhism can go very deep and the practices can change radically as you move, you know, between regions, between cultures and so on. But at least in the Himalayas, we have this, in Vajrayana Buddhism, it is, uh, we practice the mystical aspect. There we see the bu uh, guru as a Buddha, as the absolute. What did you feel at the end of those three years and three months? Wow. Um, honestly speaking, you know, speechless. I really cannot explain it. I really didn't want to come out of it. Um, very, very peaceful, very calm. Uh, like if you see a beautiful lake, a serene lake, a clear sky, right? No wind at all. It just looks so simmering. It, it felt like that. No turbulence at all. It felt like this vast lake. That's the best description I can give it to you. And it just felt like you're floating and nothing seemed to bother you. Everything seemed to lose its significance. Yeah. Praise. Okay. Somebody criticize you. Okay. Yeah. You see the emptiness in everything. The illusion in everything. Everything seems to be slightly transparent. And things really don't affect you as much. They lose their weight. So it stop, stops affecting you. You feel like you're walking through rainbows. Yeah, when you meet people and so on. It's, yeah, it's amazing. I just went back to my, to Darjeeling in 2008, eight nine when I, you know, came out of my retreat, so. <laughs> so if you enjoyed this video, make sure you check out this playlist for more videos just like this. It's the artist clips.